Are you looking for market beating yields? Are you looking for dividend growth and fantastic future opportunities? Well then, stick around and we will be looking at Arbor Realty Trust and we'll be looking at what it can do for you, what it can do for your portfolio and how it can help you to grow wealth and dividend income. But please do make sure that you stick around till the end of the video for a very special Okay, so the company is a mortgage treat. Uh, it's internally managed. They have their own management team. They uh, focused on the multifamily um, annuity based business model. Uh, they focus on the single, the single sort of sector really, really strongly. They've got a really good balance sheet um, and they've been really good at growing their dividend as well. So they've got 10 straight years of dividend growth. Uh, and they also have, in addition to that, a very low payout ratio compared to the other companies in the industry. So that gives us some confidence about the stability of their dividend and their ability to withstand uh, small bumps in the road in the future. Now when you consider the, the origination of the loans, uh, they've got a reasonably good diversification here, both from their own balance sheet, uh, agency loans uh, as well. Now they, they did make the note here as well in 2022, um, even though it looks as though in the first uh, nine months as though it's going to be a much lower figure, they do make the point as well that this is also um, at a lower cost basis. So even though there's a smaller volume, each one of these loans is earning them greater uh, income and greater benefit and profit. Now when you actually begin to look at the balance sheet um, loan portfolio composition, it's primarily bridging loans. So what we're really saying here is that this is a, a type of loan, it's going to be relatively short term, so they're not exposed to that huge uh, credit risk that many of the mortgage REITs are exposed to. Uh, multifamily asset class, it's not going away, it's not going anywhere very soon. Uh, and as well as this, when you look at the geographic location, um, exposure to Texas, Florida, so these are fast-growing Sunbelt states uh, with good uh, growth prospects and also a lot of diversification over the rest of the USA as well, which is good to see. Okay, so other parts of their business as well, the, the agency originations, uh, this has been growing at a compound annual growth rate of about 11% per year over the years, uh, and the agency servicing portfolio as well has been growing at a compound annual growth rate of about 15% per year. So pretty much in every part of their business, they are firing on all cylinders and growing beautifully. Now it's not just to, enough to know really what the company's doing and what area they're playing in, but we also want to know a bit about who is behind the team. Uh, who is behind the company. So here we're looking at the, uh, the management teams so and the senior managers of the company. Uh, and one of the key points to make note of as well is that these managers have a high level of alignment with the shareholders. They have a very high insider ownership percentage. Uh, and that really means that you know when they're working for themselves as shareholders, they're also working for us as shareholders. So they've got a huge depth of experience here, um, rooted across really different parts of the commercial real estate space, uh, and they bring all of this capability into Arbor Realty, uh, working on the behalf of the shareholders. Now, one of the reasons that uh, Arbor Realty has been so popular and has been uh, quite a, a good investment for many people has been over the years the way in which they have grown so rapidly. And we can see the growth here through to 2022. Uh, now, beyond this, these bars are projections um, and we can see the revenue isn't growing as strong into 2023 and 2024. Uh, I'd ignore 2025 due to the small number of analysts um, providing estimates out to that far. Now that's not the full story. So another thing to point out is the uh, normalized earnings per share growth. And again, we see the same sort of pattern growing strongly from 2020, 2021, tapers off a bit in 2022, and then actually uh, estimated falls for the normalized earnings per share into 2023 and 2024. So that's one thing to keep in mind as well if you're looking to invest here, is there's likely to be a weakening of the earnings per share. Uh, and so we might see, I suspect, some weakness in the prices as well, reflecting that uh, as that becomes more apparent to many investors later on. Now, of course, for dividend income, what we like to see is this, and this is what we've seen, and this is what excites many people, is this dividend growth. Uh, so reflected here in uh, the green bars is the actual amount in dividends per share, and then the orange bars is the, the orange line is the percentage change year on year. And so we can see the strong uh, improvement here in dividends uh, being paid to shareholders, uh, some moderate improvements there in uh, 2019 and 2020. 2021 a big boost, 2022 a big boost, 
uh, projected small increase in 2023 and 2024. Now these are relatively small increases but we're still talking about a sort of a 5% um, improvement in the dividends per share being paid uh, based on the analyst estimates up to about 7% um, improvement year on year uh, for the 2024 year. So the big question is, um, are these reliable estimates? Uh, should we be able to trust these analyst estimates and what do we do next and is this a good investment today? Now please do remember to hit subscribe if this video has been helpful to you and useful. Now to get part of those answers I'm going to turn once again to fast graphs. So I'm here in the analyst scorecard looking at the adjusted uh, operating earnings uh, normalized uh, EPS and what we can see here is a two year forward estimate uh, the, the analysts are getting this right pretty much all the time. Now this is with a 20% margin of error you know accounting for the fact it's harder to, to forecast out two years in advance but even here with a one year forward forecast with a 10% margin of error we can see that the analysts uh, tend to be doing a fairly good job. So look the, the, the company management team knows what they're doing they're providing Providing good guidance and the analysts are able to, to estimate to a high degree of accuracy you know what is going on and what is likely to happen in this company. Now it's not just earnings it's also the, the sort of the revenue with sales here as well and we can see an absolutely perfect score card here for, for both one year forward and two year forward estimates. Now that's important to note as well because as we saw from the ticker terminal the, uh, the revenue projections are expected to sort of taper off and begin to you know not be as strong in uh, future years and we're going to take a quick look at what this means uh, going forward now for us. So switching over in fast graphs to the forecasting calculator. Okay, so a couple of key points to note. Uh, the fast graphs here draw from a different data source, a different group of analysts than the ticker terminal does. So you need to take that into account when we interpret these numbers here. So a couple of things to note, we have here the, the adjusted of the operating earnings. Uh, it's important to note here as well, when we look at the analyst revisions at the bottom, uh, that they've been fairly stable uh, or revised upwards a fair bit over the last six months here in the case of 2024 estimates, uh, 2023 estimates revised uh, downwards fractionally and the 2022 estimates were revised upwards uh, quite strongly as well. So that's always really positive to see and really pleasing. Now the blue line here is representing the, the normal price to earnings multiple that it's traded at over the last five years and just under nine times. Uh, at the moment it's trading at about 7.3 times uh, and we can sort of see the prices are below this uh, uh, blue line here, this uh, sort of normal uh, price to earnings multiple. Now as we sort of discovered on the ticket terminal, the analysts are expecting here the, that the um, EPS uh, will decrease in 2023 and then decrease again in 2024. Now, by itself, that's not too concerning. I'd ignore the 2025 here. Uh, as I said, look, there's only one analyst reporting here, uh, so that's a bit of an aberration. Um, and even here, 2024, uh, there's only two analysts reporting out this far, so again, I'd, I'd take that with a grain of salt. Um, but the, sort of the, if we, we're looking at this and we're thinking about 2024, and we're saying, hey, look, if we held this investment for that period of time, uh, from now until the end of 2024, we're likely to get a 25-26% uh, total rate of return, which is uh, about 13% uh, per year. Now, most of that is going to be driven by the dividend yield of about uh, 10%, um, and so we're not really probably going to be expecting a lot of price um, increases uh, on top of that beautiful dividend yield. Now, the dividend is projected to increase. Now, even though at the moment uh, we have uh, quite a good dividend um, payout ratio, uh, as we can see here, with the dividends uh, likely to increase and the earnings per share likely to decrease, the dividend payout ratio is projected to increase quite a bit. And, and here again, even if they keep the dividend um, at about a 161 um, rather than 175 estimated here, you know, with that earnings per share, is putting a lot of pressure on the dividend payout ratio. So I don't think we're going to see a huge dividend increases into 2024 unless something changes, unless they can uh, work out a way to drive that EPS uh, higher into 2024, uh, which could change because the macro environment is changing. So what does this mean? 
Well, what this means is that we're not going to be expecting, uh, I don't think I would be expecting any strong price changes here uh, for the next several years. Um, I think it's going to trend sideways. I, I think we might even begin to see with this downwards change in EPS, we might even begin to see that reflected in a downwards drift in prices here. So there might be more attractive entry prices coming up. But look, it is a beautiful dividend play, it's got some really strong uh, revenue, it's a well managed company, an excellent exceptional management team here and they have a proven track record of strong dividend growth and continuing dividend growth uh, coupled with a really safe payout. And so I think, you know, there's never a bad time to buy into Arbor Realty Trust, uh, it is in my portfolio, uh, it's a relatively small position, um, as I've explained and I will explain further in other videos as well, um, I, I keep my exposure to these mortgage REITs uh, relatively low. So look, I think, you know, if you're not in this uh, you, and you're looking to, to juice up and, and add a little bit of income and dividend income, this is definitely one that you might want to consider. Um, I do think the next several years uh, are a little bit uncertain in terms of what those um, returns are going to be, but it's certainly one that you could look at. Now, oh, special news announcement. Look, the battle of movies and streaming will always be ongoing. And here we can see Comcast with their movie Knock at the Cabin has knocked off uh, Avatar from the number one perch uh, and it's looking like it's going to be a profitable move profitable movie with a relatively low budget and so we see Comcast once again strong dividend play uh, with their very strong media uh, presence here as well as part of their widely diversified portfolio and they're pulling and doing very well here in the cinema so stay tuned and we'll be covering Comcast again in the future too